Repco Home Finance reported subdued earnings in FY21. Net profit increased by a mere 3% year-on-year as loan growth was impacted by the pandemic. However, there were a couple of positives in the earnings. A sharp improvement in asset quality despite the disruption and robust margins characterized the lender's performance in FY21. Housing finance companies in general and Repco in particular are losing market shares to banks. With housing finance being secured asset segment with least credit losses, banks have increased focus in the segment amid the muted corporate credit demand. Moreover, banks have advantage due to low cost of funds, making it difficult for HFCs to compete with them on pricing. The impact of stiff competition is visible in Repco's numbers. It lost around 10 to 12% of its loan book to banks as customers and borrowers shifted to lower interest rate loans offered by banks. Given the weak loan growth and immense competition, why should investors consider Repco? First, there's good growth potential in affordable housing segment which Repco can capitalize on. Second, while asset quality deteriorated for most HFCs, Repco saw a remarkable improvement. Third, despite the challenging environment, Repco's profitability is still reasonably good with ROA of 2.4% and ROE at 16% in FY21. Moreover, profitability is set to improve further with ebbing of the second wave and economy normalizing. Strong capitalization with tier 1 capital adequacy of 29% at the end of March adds to the lender's strength. But of all reasons, what makes Repco a worthy bet is its distressed valuation. The stock is currently trading below book value estimated for FY23 despite the healthy return ratios. Repco's overall loan book increased to 12,122 crores as of March end mainly due to the near-flat loan book in its home market, Tamil Nadu, which accounts for 55% of loan book. The trend outside Tamil Nadu was no better with subdued growth in rest of India loan book. That said, disbursements picked up in Q4-FY21 to pre-COVID levels. Management expects disbursals to rise to 3,000 to 4,000 crores in FY22, which implies growth of more than 60% year-on-year. Growth is likely to be back-ended, assuming there is no third wave of further lockdowns. Given the expectation of high disbursals in second half of FY22, management has guided loan growth of 10 to 12% in FY22. We think this is a tall task considering high repayment run rate, wherein around 10% of its loans are getting shifted to banks. Economic recovery in Tamil Nadu is also crucial for sustained growth momentum. Repco's yield on loans has remained stable. However, significant fall in borrowing costs led to better spreads and slightly better margins in FY21. Going forward, the ability to diversify the funding profile and secure funding at competitive rates would be crucial as business expands. Around 52% of Repco's loan portfolio consists of self-employed borrowers, while salaried constituted 48% of loan book as on March end. Management intends to have a loan mix of 50-50 going forward as well. While the yields in the self-employed segment are higher, cash flows in this segment are highly vulnerable to adverse economic cycles. Exposure to self-employed segment along with increased slippages in the non-housing loan segment has added volatility to Repco's asset quality in the past. However, the lender saw marked improvement in asset quality with GNP ratio falling to 3.7% in FY21 from 4.3% in FY20. Also, the restructured assets remain very low at 0.3% of loan book as of March end. While restructured book is likely to increase in Q1 FY22 as a fallout of second wave, management expects GNP ratio to decline further to below 3.25% by March 22, assuming virus risk abates and economy normalizes in FY22. Overall, management's guidance on asset quality is very upbeat. The lender has improved the provision coverage on Stage 3 assets from 36% in FY20 to 40% in FY21. Despite its small size, scalability has remained a concern for the company. However, in all likelihood, earnings are set to improve in FY22 with business returning to normalcy and as leverage improves. Repco has gone through a rough period marked by lack of growth in home market and rising delinquencies in non-salaried segment. This, along with the pandemic, has pushed down Repco's stock price far below what is reasonable in relation to a stock's fundamentals. The stock has suffered a sharp derating with forward one-year price-to-book multiples contracting from a peak of 4x in FY17 
to below 1.5x in FY19 and is now trading at around 0.9 times FY23 estimated book. Among different asset classes catered to by NBFCs, home loans have least credit cost and are less risky. Hence, Repco generating ROE above 15% should command higher valuation. Despite the spectacular rally with stock price rising from 120 in June last year to 375 levels currently, there is more room for strong upside given the attractive valuation. As risk-reward is extremely favourable, investors should buy the stock.